For the past 50 years, the National Theatre has staged some of the world's most iconic theatrical productions. Whether opulent, minimal, fantastical, or realistic, costume and makeup has always played a key role. So why is it so important? And what changes have the past 50 years brought? It's very, very important that the costume tells a story. It sustains the illusion of the world the play needs in order to work. Sometimes the set has to be more minimal than it used to be. So very much the costumes and the props are the things that have to tell the story about that character and the journey that that character has through the show. Well, theatre production is about, obviously, the illusion of, uh, of a place, of, of a life, of a dream, of something that is get replicated every night on stage. In order to do so, we have to kind of transform or help the actor. That's why we use costume, we use lighting, and therefore we need to use wigs. The connection with costume obviously is very strong, mainly because the designer, 90% of the time, the designer that is designing the costume is also designing the wigs and makeup. We have actors who play more than one character in a show. So for actually to you know, differentiate between those different characters that the person is playing, it's imperative really that that character is portrayed by a costume that tells part of that story. If you have to change from a character to character under one minute, the easiest way is to have two wigs with different styles and trying to do a different style on your hair under a minute. We do still get designers who their way of cementing in their mind what this show requires is by doing a set of designs. But I would say the majority of designers these days prefer to work in a way that is more collaborative. It's, it's, it's a dialogue with the, with the actors as well. The actors got a lot to say as well what is wearing costume and wigs. The wonderful makeup artists here and the wonderful designer uh, were very open to suggestions about a lot of stuff. And they were very happy to, for me to come up with some, some of the designs myself. Now, the thing with the character I play is, he's, I just use my own accent, so it's assumed that he's Irish, like I am. So we kind of had some Irish themed tattoos on him as well. I'm becoming Bill Bones. And Bill Bones is the bloodthirstiest pirate ever to sail the seven seas. Uh, he had been around a lot of different countries and had been a lot of, around a lot of different cultures. And so I wanted a kind of a tribal look to him, I suppose. Bill Bones is on stage for maybe about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour. So you've a lot to convince an audience of in a very short period of time. And it's very much due to the creative team's influence as to how we might look at, a, say, a period play, as to whether we're trying to truly represent what absolutely would have been true to the period, making sure that as best we can, the lace, the accessories, the trim, everything was as accurate as we could. Or do they want a slightly more caricature look at that period of time? Don't forget, with 90% we do straight plays, we do reality plays. Therefore, what I'm creating is the uh, realistic vision of that character. So we don't make wigs to look like wigs, we make wigs to look like human hair. It's, it's, it's a beautiful art of wig making, um, very ancient art. It takes probably an experienced uh, wig maker, wig knotter, as we call it, uh, 40 to 45 hours to create a full wig. We have three theatre spaces here at the National, and each one brings its own um, 
challenge us from a point of view of what we, how we create the costumes. There is definitely a, a major difference the way you construct, the way you design wigs for a show in a big theatre like the Oliver or the Littleton and a show with the intimacy of the Dorfman. In the Dorfman Theatre, you could just as well have somebody wearing a costume walk by you and be inches away from you, and you're part of the action. But yet in the Olivier, you could have somebody sitting quite a long way away, yet we still need to tell that story, and the costume still needs to be able to read with that person who is sitting at the back of the circle. And the additional challenge that's been put upon us over this last couple of years is NT Live. The way the NT Live affects my department is huge because obviously we move in tools and we move in medium from, from a stage performance we go to a recorded on high HD cameras and the cameras are not quite close, closer than what the audience will be on that particular night and so we need to give to the audience also what they're expecting to see. I think as a generalisation, a lot of designers used to want to create something that took you into a different world, that, that made you feel that these had been created especially for this play or these characters, whereas now there is much more of a feeling to have things that allow the characters and the actors to speak through and the costumes and the clothes to almost blend into the background. Although we are called the costume department and we're creating costumes for actors, very many, many designers these days refer to them as clothes. They want them to be more realistic. I, I think, you know, when you, when you don't look back to just last year or the year before and you try and take a little slice of time that goes back 10 years or 20 years and something like that, then there are things that I think have played their part in moving things forward. I think Lycra is one of those things that, you know, we now can't imagine life without Lycra in all of our everyday lives. But certainly in costume, it has revolutionised the way that we work and the way that we can use fabrics and the way that we can utilise things. Can you imagine being somebody wearing a costume that they had to move in or dance in and it didn't have stretch in it and it was you know, a very restrained and, and tight thing and how that must change your approach to how that you move, how you stand and everything else. One thing that hasn't changed over 50 years is that really silhouette is really, really important. It's the silhouette that tells you what period of time you are in what's revealed by a costume is what level in society is this person? Is the neck high? Is the neck low? Is it tight fitting? Is it loose fitting? So you know very much silhouette tells a story. Over 50 years the techniques have changed, the fashions have changed and the audience expectations have changed and although we respond to those changes, we can always lead the way as well in creating those changes. The basic essence of all of this is that we have to be able to tell the story with the costume. People have to know what the characters are trying to do. And that hasn't changed.